Hello. Today's a fun day. I can't wait. So, if you've been following along with Wonderland so far, uh, you know that I've been trying to get the rest of the background elements where there's characters with faces figured out. At least to the point where I know where the faces are going. And with that in mind, uh, what I've done is I've got the placement for where the talking flowers will be. That is not today's prompt, but it is a prompt coming up and those were the last faces that I would need to, to go ahead and get added. So, uh, with that said, what I can do now is add some wonderful random splashes uh, to the background here. So let me just get any eraser skewings, fuzzies, anything that might have gotten on here from overnight and from me sketching these flowers into place. I am actually going to do that again only because I wasn't thinking about uh, knocking down the eraser, uh, not, not the eraser, knocking down the graphite just a touch for the flowers. So basically I want enough where I can see where their placement is, but I don't want it too dark in case any splashes do go there. So a lot of times when you put uh, watercolor over graphite, it's going to lock that those particles in place and that is not what I want very much. So basically with everything mapped out as far as where all these faces are, if I do wind up splashing uh, too much color over there, I'm going to be able to, to know exactly where I need to be lifting that pigment up. And that's why I didn't do this earlier because I didn't want uh, just too much pigment in areas where I don't want that because uh, dealing with scale like all these elements are pretty small this this whole piece all together is uh, 8 by 10 so I wanted to make sure that I do have room to uh, convey all those elements because this is a 30-day challenge I'm sliding this over so you can see a little bit better Meanwhile, I'm going to grab a quick sip of my tea. Today I decided for tea. And let's adjust my lighting. I have... Oh, there's my shadow. I have my, uh, my brushes. I'm gonna put them in the corner where I keep my water cup normally. I'll just move that out a little bit because I want to make sure that we have a good... good frame to be able to see all the elements here. And I am trying to do multiple things at once, so hopefully I can keep up with all of that, but I found music that I really like. Uh, I just typed in Celtic, and I'm, I'm going ahead and doing that playlist calling at the same time. I figure the best way is to be able to listen to the tracks and know if I like them. So I'm going to be clicking over to, to download those as we go because of the, the sound membership I have. I want to make sure that I have everything all ready. Um, also, uh, announcement while I'm, uh, drink, well, you know what, let me drink my tea and then I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and give you the announcement because I'm, I'm running my throat a little bit. And thank you so much for your patience. All right, so we'll just park the tea back here. Hopefully that's not going to leave a shadow. It should be far enough back. Uh, we're going to go, um, let's see, I should probably go ahead and mix up some puddles of color. I'm going to go, hmm, you know what, we'll, we'll do it this way first. But first I'm going to just wet my palette a little bit. I don't normally do that uh, when you've been watching me uh, throughout this challenge so far. I have not been wetting the palette, I've just been using my brushes to go and reactivate. Uh, the reason why I'm wetting it today is because we are going to mix up some puddles of color onto the palette uh, so we can go do that splashy background. I will probably wet the surface of this a bit because I'm going to want some of the splashes to go ahead and, and spread out a little bit. 
So once I have my colors decided, I'll go ahead and give the surface a quick spray. Excuse me. And I'm going to leave it as a spray dots instead of spreading a layer of water across the whole surface. This is going to leave us a little bit more of a randomized pattern. Uh, this is entirely experimental. Um, I was thinking I would knock down the graphite for the executioner area, but that's all stonework, so the graphite will probably look all right. I'm trying to think if there's anywhere that I should knock down some graphite. I'm going to do it for the for our frog here, our frog footman. I'm going to knock his graphite down. So we're about to be painting him today, especially things like his stockings and whatnot. But anyway, uh, so while I'm doing that, I'll go ahead and get on with this announcement. So if you've been with me before, you know that I have been interested in continuing the month-long stream that was a little bit up in the air and we've worked out a compromise. So I will be continuing the month-long stream, but because our son is at a young enough age, he doesn't like to be away from mommy very much. Uh, and that's something he'll, he'll grow out of. It's, it's a normal phase for kids who are under two years old. But um, So what we're going to do is I'm going to continue with Mermay. Uh, it'll be a a month-long series of prompts that will have a very kind of beachy, oceany vibe to them. Um, now, a lot of artists approach Mermaid in different ways. So there's the just following what's on the prompt. There's some that go ahead and take that prompt and specifically try to make it into a mermaid. Like every day of the prompts are mermaids. Um, you don't even have to do prompts, but I've been liking the challenge of of coming up with the uh, with drawings based on the the prompt list. Uh, of course, Wonderland is one of my favorites. I'm as far as mythological creatures, mermaids actually aren't my favorite, but they are within mythology, and you know there's a lot of stories about them, so I do like them. They're just not my favorite. I'm a lot more of a fairy person. Um, if I find a fairy themed prompt a list for a future month, I will absolutely look into it. As it is, I've actually found three prompt lists that I'm really interested in. And what I've done is I've created an insane list of, uh, of all the prompts. I'll go ahead and do a quick show on that. So yeah, I've, I've put down um, profile names across the top. And, uh, you know, as far as who these prompt lists are from, I have the images saved on my phone, so I can keep track of them there. But in the case of Navigating 3, I was kind of seeing how they compare to each other to see if I was going with one, two. And then when I reviewed the list after all three were on it, I'm thinking, I can actually do this. I can actually follow three prompt lists for the entire month. And I think they all work. Um, you know, the, uh, at, uh, Patri underscore P underscore P. Their prompts, uh, I think, had two typos because it's supposed to be a dark mermaid prompt. Uh, we have poisson, which since the rest of the list is in English, I'm pretty sure they don't mean fish. I think it might have been a typo for poison. And then uh, later on in the list, there was witch, but it was W-H-I-T-C-H. I don't think they mean like witch option type thing. I, I think they, they mean uh, witch, so I, I just corrected the spelling there. Um, it just makes sense for the theme, and that's what I'm going to go with, because, you know, Poisson is not too inspiring as far as a prompt to just do fish. Um, it's, it's just me. Uh, that's, that's where my head is at on it. So, yeah, I have uh, the Artistic Isle prompt list. That one came out uh, the most recent, so I, I kind of just squished that one in the middle. Um, and, of course, like any, any dark themes, I love dark themes. And that is something that I like to approach both light and dark aspects in my work. So, some of these may lean 
a little bit lighter, some of these may lean a little bit darker, but I want to at least hit all those prompts that are here and do that in a way that feels correct or, or accurate to me. So, uh, you know, the, these will be very personal interpretations of the Dark Mermaid list ends a little abruptly on the 25th, uh, leaving off the end of the month, so missing five days. But that's not bad, having five days to have one less prompt to work on. Um, I'm pretty excited to do that, and I am also deciding, like, as opposed to this month, this month my expectation was that all of these prompts would be um, just a one-off. I'm sorry. I'm, I've definitely lost my train of thought. Um, oh, that was it. Time. So, my initial thought when I was going ahead and doing the painting was that I thought each of these would be done within a half hour max, and that was not the case. A lot of these wound up taking an hour, and that's because of allowing other things going on behind the scenes, whether I was doing maintenance for like social media, uh, learning the software, things like that. So I generally spend about an hour before the camera's even rolling in mindset prep and other other elements. So that's why on camera it had been theorized that I would just do this for an hour. I mean, I'm sorry, just for a half hour and that an hour would be my overflow time. That that would be the most that I would want to have the stream go. And moving forward into May, I'm just, it's an hour, that is the cap. I don't expect that I'll have prompts that go less time. I'm also going to be approaching Mermaid in a different way. Um, originally, uh, well, you can see here with Wonderland, I'm working on one little element of an overall 8x10. What I'm going to do instead for May is do drawing and line work on camera. So you can see all of that. Uh, the only thing that you'll miss is if I am doing thumbnails to go ahead and get an idea for composition, um, any reference image, like research, stuff like that, that's all going to happen off camera. But what you will see is on camera, pencil drawing and ink. Now with the ink, that's going to be however I feel like doing the ink for that, that particular subject. So that may be using a calligraphy nib, uh, like what these guys. This one's nice and flexible. I can go ahead and get some line variation with it. Uh, I could be with a brush. I'm expecting thin line work, maybe washes, probably not. And. It looks like that is stuck, so I'm going to restart the playlist because that seems to be a little bit stuck. It's like her network decided to just go a little wonky right there. But anyway, um, so with the, with the line work, I can do that with a brush, I can do that with a marker, or like a a fine liner is basically a marker anyway, just d different style of nibs. It could be a brush marker, anything. Um, you know, I'm I'm intending to just do line work. Probably stick with just cross hatching, so the entire series has a very cohesive feel. And I may go ahead and vary ink colors through the series as far as what I think works best for that particular element. I should be mixing up puddles of watercolor while I'm talking about this. Um, I'm going with this brush. Uh, this is the number 12 Menta by Royal and Um, uh, this has like a really, really wonderful bevel on the end of it. So if you ever wanted to go ahead and indent the surface of your watercolor paper to give it a different texture or to go ahead and like scratch back color, it will dent your paper. That, that's part of what it's for. But if you wanted to like indicate something like um, fine leaves for, for grass, something like that, you can do that. 
Um, it's not a technique that I've done, but I have read and watched other artists do it. So just letting you know that's that's an option. And this playlist, let's see. We'll go with this one. All right, I think that's where we were. I, I think it's in the order. Surprisingly, there was no actual playlist, so I'm just listening to songs that came up when I typed in Celtic. So we're just seeing where that gets to. Um, now I'll stop yammering a little bit about what's going to happen, so we can get into what, what's happening today. So I figure... In Wonderland, I definitely want some blue. So we'll do some splashes in blue. I'm making a nice little puddle of the Thalo blue turquoise. Now that I know that's the order for these, the name of it. Uh, I believe there's a little bit of green that's kind of sinking in there, and that's okay. I don't mind it tip tipping a little bit more green. I'll be fine for a wash. And I definitely want some purple, but I'm going to thin out the dioxazine violet pretty far because I'm not trying to change the value of this too terribly. I don't want washes that are too dark and you're not going to be able to see any of the detail that we've been working on. So I have a nice little puddle of that. Um, I'm going to go with a probably a smaller brush than this when I actually do the splashes because I'm not mixing up huge puddles. Just uh, fairly small ones for the size, uh, the scale of this. Um, I do want a red, and the question is which? I think I'm going to go with the quinacridone red. So I have some other stuff still on my palette here in the middle. This is where I generally put like my reds and oranges. There's still some, some pink and probably some coral here. That's fine. Actually, that's not as red as I'd like. So I'm making a nice puddle of the quinacridone red, which looks quite pink. And then I'm going to add something to it. I think I'm going in with a little bit of the pyrrol red, just to tip it a little bit more red. Pyrrol red's a little bit, um, just a little bit opaque, so like a semi-opaque or semi-translucent. Not sure which which side of the spectrum that would count as, but I do want to tip this just a touch more red, like a, a touch more true red. But I still want that transparency. Not exactly where I want it, but that should work. All right. I know I said I was going to try to do this on my lap, but I felt like the camera angles weren't going to work as well as I would want. So now you can see some splatters happening, hopefully. Hopefully we're not going to get anything running. Because I'm not trying to soak this, I'm just trying to give uh, room for these these patterns to sprawl out and be pretty interesting. And I might even go into a little bit of the uh, Quinn Coral later. I am actually grabbing a little bit more of the Pyrrol uh, Red. It is such a pretty color. I don't want this to go too light, so here we go. Hopefully, I don't splatter my camera. There we go, we have something on a face. We don't want stuff on our faces. Alright, and we have a bunch on this flower's face. Don't want that either. So that's pretty light. That shouldn't cause any problems when I do that wash. Um, 
I really want this to be more in the background, so anytime I'm seeing it on a character, I am going to go ahead and do a little bit of blotting. I want this to add a random element to that background. Ooh, I think I got a little bit on my jelly over here. Hopefully that lifts pretty well. So yeah, this is the, the perfect opportunity of, oh god, am I going to wreck this thing? <laughs> And I do actually have some all kinds of sections that are blooming out. Oh no, this is certainly adding to chaos. Oh, and of course I'm getting a phone call back. This is probably from my do daughter's doctor's appointment. Okay, so I think that's enough of the red. I'm thinking that these, this idea for the splashes is probably a terrible idea. <laughs> Make me a little anxious already, but... The show must go on. I don't know why I'm blotting my brush so much. I don't want to uh, have this dry. I want this to have a good bit of pigment. So. Let's blot off our Tweedle. Hopefully we've missed all of our main characters. I think so. I think I'm only going to go over on this side pretty light. Okay, so I don't have any main characters splattered. That's nice and random back here. I kind of like that. Oh, we have a little bit bleeding onto our white rabbit. I'm curious, would you go with the same colors that I mixed up? And like a blue green, a purple, and a red? Or would you have been more all about uh you know other colors like orange or something? Uh, that sign is that's pretty pretty crazy. Uh, we have uh, Rowdy Robbie in our, our chat. Hello! I don't know if you uh, you caught the announcement or uh, you're just seeing the chaos ensuing on the screen. I keep dabbing off this brush and I really need it nice and saturated. So we want some pigment coming down. This is... from here. Okay, some of this has already dried down where we're not getting so much of the crazing going on. Like this, these edges over here, this side has has been pretty dry. You can see the, the splatter's not um, spider webbing out like, like some of this is. But I think... I think that's interesting. I'm curious if I shouldn't have uh, removed some of it from the signpost here because that might be a little hard to read. I kind of like it up in the woods. Maybe I should have done a little more red there. Or maybe I should have added a, another contrasting color. I'm not sure. I kind of have mixed feelings. I kind of wish that was a mossy green because that would be a freaking fabulous moss texture. And maybe I should go into a green. Make maybe make up uh, kind of an olivey shade. Like the uh, the sap green and dioxazine violet. Or uh, or even sap green and uh, some quinburn orange. 
that will go ahead and kind of kind of give us some really neutral mixes though. And I'm just just giving us another second to think about it. Hmm. You know what? No, I, I think well. I think a green, but I don't think a neutral green. I probably should think a neutral green, though. Some parts of the compositions are a little bit loud. How about... Hmm, some of the rich green gold, maybe. I know I'm kind of mixing up this puddle kind of late. Um, this brush is a little bit wide, so I am getting a little bit of the sap green contaminating it. That'll probably happen on the palette too, because uh, I'm mixing this in my my greenish blue area. Some more water. All right, and there's not a whole lot of the actual uh, speckles from the. earlier um, spray bottle spritzing that I did. Oh, and there's a little bit of phthalo green and yellow shade over here too. So that's slightly in this puddle, but not a whole lot. That, that's at a rate that it's not going to bother me. So just a little bit. Ooh, we got our rabbit's ears. sucks. Um, I should have gone a little bit higher to have slightly larger splatters. Oh no, I didn't see that we got him. Our uh, knave of hearts has a spot of blue on his head, which actually blotted up really, really nicely where that looks like a shadow on his hair, so. Got lucky with that one. Definitely up in the woods. Don't mind some dots here and there elsewhere. I'm just going to maybe add in a dot. Kind of give that a little bit of a pattern, kind of trailing off. I think that should be everything. Ooh, I want to dab off that mushroom slightly. I don't want those to be too hard for the edges up on the mushroom. Alright, so let's see if we can get our frog footman looking good now that we're almost a half hour in the uh, background got kind of crazy there and as always you can feel free to comment I'm just double checking on twitch to make sure everything looks good there Basically, at any point, if I realize that we've listened to a couple tracks and they weren't distracting to me, then I'll go ahead and get a few more. And so I do recommend when you're done dealing with uh, your watercolor washes, um, you and, and your brushes. Uh, once you've rinsed them out, go ahead and leave them laying on their side to dry before you go ahead and put them up in a brush rack. Uh, if you if you actually have a brush rack with like the uh, the spring loaded thing, and you can hang your brushes face down where the 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 hairs of your brush are facing down without getting squished, then that is ideal because that'll allow the water to go away from the brush and not get stuck up in the ferrule. 
Um, in this case, this one's a plastic ferrule, so that's not really a problem. But a lot of times with like the wood ones, you'll go ahead and have your varnish split or the uh, or the paint start cracking. And it can also loosen up the ferrule and where it's going to pop off. I have some brushes that even though I don't store my brushes in water where they're going to get bloated, like I, I rinse off and then I let it sit, sit down to dry. I still have some that get a little bit loose. And one example of that would be the the Sterling Studios uh, number one that I've been using. So there's a slight little shimmy where I can feel the ferrule moving. That's one of those, it hasn't bothered me yet. I'm basically just waiting for the day that it does choose to jump off of the, uh, the brush handle. So I can go ahead and glue it in place and it's not going to go anywhere because it is slightly distracting. Uh, it's especially inconvenient when it happens with like what's supposed to be some of my nicer brushes, like the, the Escada that I have. Uh, that I've been using to go ahead and clean up stray eraser bits. Like that one has a pretty significant little twist there and I don't know if I was just unlucky on that uh, because this brush holds so much water that I actually rarely use it because I don't work very large. I, I tend to work small with some pretty tight washes. So this hasn't seen a whole lot of action. and It seems weird that it's acting up like that. I'm sorry, I'm really trying not to cough into the um, the mic here. I think it's just me talking so much right now, so I'm going to stop for just a second to get a drink. I'm wondering if it may actually be because it's tea and normally when I have tea is not a time where I do a lot of talking during the day. It's actually a really wonderful tea though. Um, it's the Tower of London from Harney and Sons. It's got a, uh, a bergamot flavor that's not like beat you over the head with it like an Earl Grey is. So it's like a, a really nice like happy citrus without being as tangy as like an orange or uh, or lemon or lime, so it's it's definitely you you know it's citrus, uh, but it's almost floral without making you feel like you've stuffed flowers in your mouth. I I don't like rose flavored foods, but I don't mind rose scented bath stuffs and, and perfumes and things like that. So I'm kind of kind of picky about my flowers. Um, though there are a lot of edible flowers available. Things like, uh, pansies and nasturtiums, uh, nasturtiums. Wow. Oh, roses are also edible. But, uh, that's not something that's traditionally consumed in America. It's one of those, like, you have to kind of push for that. Uh, it's an unusual palette choice. I kind of wish some of my splatter was a little bit bigger, but I think that's my fault for doing smaller puddles and generally doing those splashes fairly up close. Um, I'm not upset with them, but I probably could have done that differently. Um, this track is a little much for me. I'm going to skip this ahead. Let's see where it ended. And yet that one doesn't bother me. So I'm I'm all over the place musically. Alright, so back to our frog footman here. Uh, not a lot going on in the chat stream, unless it's not displaying everything. 
Um, let's go ahead and get his coat in. I can do that pretty quickly. He's going to be... Hmm... I'm going to say he would be pretty similar to a uh, Jack of Hearts, but I want to make sure that while costumed somewhat ornately for being in this aristocratic society, I also want to make sure that he seems um, different enough. I would hope that like just sitting there holding onto this hedgehog and flamingo would, would do it. So let's do I think I'm going to redo the lapel later. Right now. I have that just being um red, but I I think I'm going to change it to black. Just to give it a little bit more contrast. I'm trying to be really gentle here on the side. I should probably zoom that in. And I, honestly, I should probably just use a, use a quick break. I'm sorry. Uh, just a moment. So sorry about that break. I just could not wait. And I might have hard edges on this wash now, but that's just something I'm going to have to deal with. Like I'm doing my best as far as trying to hydrate really well, but also um, not have to randomly stop midstream. And that has not been working out for me the, these past couple of days. I don't know what's up with that. I think we're going to do black pants for him. So, kind of tone him down visually, I guess, to make him a little more plain, but it'll also, like, increase contrast, so it's not ideal. It'll make him stand out a little bit more. Oh wow, that sleeve angle is terrible for where- well, you know what? He's got big hands. He's got, you know, web fingers and stuff. I'm, I may redraw his hand. Now that I'm painting this in, I'm like, that doesn't make sense there. Uh, this is the number one from Sterling Studios that I'm currently using. I think just uh, red and black. Do very, very little gold on him, if any. Maybe on the shoes or some random line. Just some detail. to let me know if you guys can hear the music all right. 
because sometimes I'll, I'll listen to the stream and it seems like unless I have the volume all the way up, I'm really not hearing the music. And I don't know if that is a setting that works out for you guys or not. You know, the music's there to be enjoyed. Sometimes it is relevant to what I'm painting. No, I didn't do his jacket on this side. Hmm. I don't know if I want a free hand in a jacket. Maybe assume that it's... Swing back over there a little bit. Probably a terrible idea just free handing this. I think that works. And then swing around there. So that should be fine. Do I guess black for the lapels. You know, I might, I might do uh, gold for the waistcoat and then black for the pants. That should make him fairly plainish. And when I'm saying black, I'm, I'm currently using the uh, neutral tint for a bit of the black. Um, this is more of an illustration than realism. In general, I, I do kind of avoid uh, black. Oh no, I'm not afraid of neutral tint though. I think that winds up kind of being a topic all over the place for artists. Like, oh, you're not a real artist if you use black. It's like, you know, paints gray and sepia and black, those were all paints on the market. Somebody is buying them. Somebody is using them. Oh, even fugitive pigments are still manufactured. So, I'm... I'm also coming at this from being like a goth back in high school. I like black. It's rather pleasant. There's plenty of times when you're doing realism, though. Objects pick up a uh, localized color, especially in shadow. You see a lot of blues and purples and browns. There's all kinds of wonderful colors that can be used in shadow. Um, I think I'll go with uh, more of the neutral tint for his shoes. These are kind of like slippers. This is similar to a tenial had uh, dressed as frog footman. I didn't go with the powdered wig, and then he's got a different head shape. Oh, no, I'm not needing to noodle a little bit with the, uh, the slipper. Sometimes my brush control is not as good as I would like on an individual stroke. And then I have to go ahead and try to make this foot not look weird because I did not follow the line. And that's okay, because it's all fixable. And we'll see if our froggy here has dried enough for me to do the lapels. It seems to be I'm going to need to go over that again, because that wound up a little bit more transparent than I'd like. And I mixed up uh, some slightly stronger neutral tint to go ahead and come back over the use of the petals. This might just loose enough to flow. You have this shaped a little bit more like it's the color of like a smoking jacket instead of the uh, the same color style I've used on the other gentleman. All right, 
right, so we'll give that a second to go ahead and dry before I'm doing the waistcoat. And I've kind of let the playlist probably go a little bit too far. So rather than do that search again, I'm just going to grab those last couple tracks. I know I'm multitasking a lot and it's probably not the best thing. So I'll add more detail into the uh, collar. It's one of those uh, skinny scarves. I'm, I've, I'll am i admit I've been a little bit influenced with, uh, with watching Outlander a lot lately. So. Hence soundtrack. I just started season 6. So I'm going back with really, really, really thin um, neutral tint, just to go ahead and give these stockings a little bit of form. Implied ankles here. And I should have this zoomed in. I don't know why I don't have this zoomed in now. Now that we're not working on the background. This absolutely should have been zoomed in a bit. Okay, now you can see our frog footman a little bit better, and I can fix the camera from sitting all cockeyed when I put the battery in it earlier. Alright, so just really light shading on these stockings. You don't want to have, have our men here with naked legs, right? Silly. I'm gonna go back over this calf a little bit though. Well, it's not perfect to go ahead and apply shape, but it's better than a blank. And then I gotta figure out our frog skin tone. Well, I could have done that while I had the uh, neutral tint loaded up. I'm going to go slightly deeper with the color. Like slightly. Is still the keyword. Um blot a bit of that off the belly of the brush. I don't want the brush too wet. I'm just going to go into this knot. Waistcoat in. No, I probably can't. Well, that was silly of me. All right, let's find skin tone for our uh, our froggy friend here. I do kind of like that the color tone of the rich green gold mix being kind of a at a stronger strength, and that would be nice to give him a little bit more contrast from uh, the the sap green mixes that we used over here that's not going to be too loud. So we can always start with lighter and then work our way darker, which is probably what I'll do. So I still have some of that puddle sitting here. Um, like I said earlier, the puddle is slightly contaminated. It has uh, the tiniest bit of uh, some phthalo green yellow shade. If you don't have that and you want to mimic that mix to like a fairly watery mix of phthalo green blue shade, and that way, when you're adding the water to your, your rich green gold, you should get a similar hue. But again, the thalos are very strong, tiny bit at a time. Like even, you grab like a, your liner brush and just a teeny little dot into the, the thalo green and dot it over. Um, I'm going to go ahead and lay down just a glaze for the rich green gold. Eyelids. I figure this way I can go ahead and work up some deeper shades. And I'm going 
to stay really, really pale around the mouse, kind of like he's got a white belly. frog hands, which in this case you can't really see the web feet or any detail. I just have it like this big ham fist <laughs> over here. Um, I think we're going to go in with like a goldish tone for the eyes before I go ahead and paint in that detail. That detail will go with a spotter, um, probably just neutral tint. Um, when I get to that, to that point, I definitely want the eyes leaning more, more gold tone. And I might actually glaze them more than once. Uh, let's, I was thinking, yes, let's live dangerously. I'll go into the uh, those details right now. It's like, no, 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 give, give the eye a moment. Oh, give the, the face a moment to dry before I'm getting into the eye. Uh, so instead, um, thinning out a bit of the quinacridone gold, blotting the belly of the brush a bit, and then we'll go into the waistcoat because that should have had enough time to dry between the neck scarf and the lapels. I want that to have a little bit of contrast with the frog's skin. That's why I want to go nice and warm with this color. Plus it coordinates with the other gold accents that we've used so far. Could actually do a bit of shading on that sleeve bit, but we'll leave that for later. And again, I'm giving the face a little more time to dry because eyes are such a small detail and they also really bring a character to life, so I'm not wanting to rush that. So instead, I'm going to grab some of the heavier mix of the neutral tint. Let's go ahead and put some detail over here. the thicker mix of neutral tint and just ever so slightly going over the top of the shoe specifically a frog. I feel like if I go too dark with some spots then it might be reading as more toad. So I'm taking a look at spotted frogs. Okay, so they can have some texture and some spots. I've actually seen a few. So 
generally brown or black fish spots. Unless we're getting into like poison dart frogs, which that would have been interesting to do a, a poison dart frog, but I don't feel like that would have been correct for this far over. You know, the queen's more interested in having people's heads cut off and not poisoning her, her subjects. So we'll just kind of leave that as is. This uh, little bit over here got kind of crazy with this wash. I'm really curious to see how this is going to come together, me trying to paint around some of these splotches um, as far as tying our background together. Uh, it should be neat. So, looking forward to the challenge. Um, as far as for our froggy here, I think. I'm going to see what I get mixing the rich green gold and the quinbert orange, which I might actually have. I do have that on my chart here. So, let's go ahead and see what you guys see. Oh, that's not helpful at all. All right, I'm going to zoom out see the color chart. So we have rich green gold in this column and there's our quinacridone burn orange. So this is more heavily on the orange side. Uh, over here when we come across the rich green gold to the quinacridone burn orange this is a nice light brown that we get uh, when the mixture is tipped heav more heavily to the rich green gold. That's why I love having these type of mixture sheets so you're just so you can see the difference between the two. It gives you a better idea as far as what happens if you tilt the mix more one way than the other. I don't like 50-50 mixing charts because it's only going to show you one aspect of that range of color. And as far as seeing what it looks like washed out, well, that's why I go pretty light at the top corner of the, uh, the swatches and then I go deeper into the mass tone, like letting the, the color pool there. Because that lets me see more than one thing on my color chart. Uh, like the Indian Room Blue with the uh, the Potter's Pink. You can see that nice granulation sitting there. I do kind of miss Potter's Pink um, once in a while for like special effects, but I haven't missed it as far as like actively working. So I'm debating do I want to go with a brownish tone or maybe like a deeper green? I think I might actually do. I think I might do the sap green, use the sap green for shading, as well as uh, maybe some spots. Just to give me a deeper value to go ahead and help carve out some of that, uh, that shape. And I don't mind using sap green here and there for a lot of different elements because it's going to help add cohesiveness to the overall image. So everything kind of ties in together because it's all similar colors. So with that really thin mix, I am very gently doing some line work on his hand. I want to emphasize, hopefully, that he's got this nice little webbed hand webbing between the, the fingers. I know it is such a silly detail. Because at this scale you really can't see it.
and very lightly doing some outlining. Oh, that actually reminds me. I don't think I went into with the announcement. Yes, I did. Never mind. I'm my brain scattered apparently today. Um, well, I mean, when out when aren't I? Right. I'm going back into the neutral tint. Go ahead and correct the shadow. I wanted this to be here, but I also wanted it to fade better, and that line was a little bit harsh. I'm just going back over this and spreading out that wash on the surface a little bit, just so we hopefully it behaves and does what I want it to. Oh wow, we're already at 3 o'clock. Well, I mean, we pretty much have all of his details done. Uh, the only thing I would do is uh, go ahead and fill in the hedgehog in his hand, which I want to get a better idea of which direction to have the quills go. So that'll be, probably be off camera. Um, and also a quick bit of sepia for shading on the jacket. Uh, not the, the jacket, the, uh, the vest. So just to give that a little bit more definition, but I'm um, pretty, pretty much going to, to wrap up here. Uh, if I recall correctly, tomorrow is Talking Flowers. Uh, just double checking. Meanwhile, my playlist decided to stop for a moment. I hope not everything's buffering. Like, I'm not doing anything else online right now. Okay, so tomorrow is mushrooms and then talking flowers. So we got lots to uh, to get to. I can't wait to get to the rest of these mushrooms because that's going to be fun. They're one of my my favorite things. As far as any any fantasy or fairy tale, it's just it's a nice whimsical touch with those mushrooms. All right, so that's enough of my rambling for one day. And thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you'll continue to join me uh, as we finish off the rest of this series and move into Mermaid coming up. And as always, keep painting.